Hi guys, and thanks for joining us for week six of our eight week broiler project. I am Katie with Townline Poultry Farm and six weeks ago we started one day old baby meat bird chicks to walk you through the process of raising meat birds week by week. Check out our channel uh, to catch up on weeks one through five if you're just now joining us and make sure to like and subscribe to watch the final weeks of our project. So today we weighed our birds and, um, well a few of them anyway, and it looks like we're averaging at about five and a half to six pounds for our meat birds at six weeks of age. It's pretty impressive that just six weeks ago these guys were just little one day old baby chicks. Now keep in mind the weight that we are at is for all males. You can see that our meat birds are for the most part pretty evenly sized. Um, that's not always gonna be the case if you raise straight run, which means that the chicks were not sexed. If you, order, if you uh, started raising straight run, you should have some males and some females. And males will generally, by the end of eight weeks, be about one to two pounds bigger than females. Um, there are different preferences for raising the different sexes, depending on what you're looking for. We like to raise all males, uh, just because they do get to be a bigger overall chicken. Um, you get more meat just uh, in general with the whole body weight. Uh, females though, a lot of people do prefer to raise just females because they tend to have more broad and more breast meat. Right now, if we were to have our birds process, being that they're averaging between five and a half to six pounds, you generally lose about 20% of weight through the butchering process. So we would end up with a, almost a perfect size fryer, like a four, four and a half pound bird. Talking about processing, I mentioned it once, uh, I believe at week three maybe, um, that it's actually a good idea to reach out to your custom processor before you even order your chicks. But when you're not sure where to start looking for a processor, I generally suggest looking online, it's what we go to for everything these days. Um, asking a friend or family that you know ha that has raised meat birds, they may know of somebody, or your local meat market may be able to help you find a custom processor. And there are a couple things to consider when looking for a custom poultry processor. Uh, one of the main things is gonna be what is your, in what do you intend to do with the meat? Is it just for self-consumption? Are you just feeding or filling your freezer with meat? Or do you plan on selling these uh, or selling the meat at like a, a farmer's market? If that is the case, there is a certain um, type of processor that you would need to find. It can still be a custom processor, but that processor would have to be certified by the USDA. There's certain food safety regulations that they need to follow, certain permits that they need to have um, that have to be in place for you to legally sell the meat for the public to consume. Uh, if it's just for self-consumption, that doesn't apply. You, the, the processor doesn't have to be certified, but you would you know, still want to make sure it's in a clean, sterile environment, that the equipment is clean just for your safety, uh, but you, they don't have to be involved with the USDA. Another thing you'll want to think about is, um, or talk to them about before ordering your chicks preferably, um, is their available butcher dates. If they are booked out for 12 weeks, then you don't wanna start your meat birds now. You wanna wait until the timing is right to line up with that butcher date. And because it is a specialty niche, that can happen quite often. In the busy months, the summer months, when a lot of people are raising meat birds, uh, custom processors may not have any available dates for a couple months. Um, there's even times in the winter when a custom processor might shut down altogether because there's just not enough de demand or enough customers calling to have their chickens butchered. Taking your own advice is sometimes the hardest part. We did not do that this time, so we are actually uh, going to have the pleasure of butchering our own chickens. Luckily, I'm a little familiar with the process. I did it for quite a long time outside of this farm. So we are gonna actually walk through that process with you too after we're done raising our meat birds to eight weeks. Make sure to like and subscribe so we can teach you how to butcher your own birds if this were to happen to you. But hopefully you take our advice and talk to processors before starting your meat birds, like we should have done. So we've talked about temperature a lot. Um, 
you can see that we still have our stoves going. The biggest reason for that is we're located in the frigid state of Michigan and it's the middle of the winter right now. So it's pretty cold outside. So even though our barn, um, the whole barn is heated a bit, um, we like to offer that extra heat source just in case temperatures were to get really bad overnight, like happens a lot in Michigan, so that they can still get warm and stay comfortable. If you are raising in the summer um, or in a warmer climate, you may not need the heat source at all anymore. You can see that our birds are, for the most part, all feathered out. Generally, you want to be at about 65 degrees, but keep in mind that when chickens are big, they are actually putting out their own heat. So most of the time, once they are fully feathered out and this large, um, again, still depending on the variables of weather, they, they most likely don't need the extra heat. We are gonna go ahead and give it to them because it's cold here. So another thing to notice with um, our birds being all males is you'll notice that we still have quite a few bald spots, I guess, or it doesn't look like they're fully feathered out. Females tend to feather out fuller and quicker than males. And that's kind of why you'll see some of the bald, baldness on our birds. It wouldn't be the case with females. They would be pretty much fully feathered out. Another thing you'll notice is they're lazy. We have mentioned that before. Um, but this is again where the feed schedule of 12 hours on and 12 hours off, restricting that feed for 12 hours a day becomes important. So you can tell they're laying down, they will stretch their legs out. Uh, but our birds have no problem standing up and moving around. So even though they are lazy birds and like to lay down, they are not having trouble standing up or moving around. So something you may notice if you've ever raised egg layers um, versus meat birds, there's a big difference in their leg size. So this is something that's done in the breeding. And again, it's to help with the leg issues that I mentioned with the feeding schedule. Uh, but you can see here that our birds, their legs have developed quite nicely so that they can support their extremely fast growth rate. You're still gonna wanna be checking the bedding. We're still checking and cleaning their waters, making sure they have plenty of feed during the day and taking it away at night. But by this point, week six, it's pretty easy. It pretty much kind of handles itself. They're, they don't need much babysitting anymore. We are way out of the danger zone for that part. That pretty much wraps it up for week six. It's gonna be pretty easy going the next couple weeks here. Um, and then a, a day of hard work. Thanks for joining us. Again, make sure to like and, su and subscribe. Don't miss the last couple weeks, plus our big finale of butchering. Um, and we'll see you next time.